Rob Snowman, director of Howard's Way. Thanks for coming on the Blue Room. No problem. How did you get into Everton? Oh, um, I, I have no idea. I'm from Cornwall, um, North Cornwall, place called Bude. The only Everton fan in the playground, um, and I can't tell you why. I, I, there was no single moment. Uh, there wasn't a game that I saw or a scoreline or, or anything. Bob Latchford was my first football hero. Yeah. Uh, and I remember so know, when did it, you it meant more to see his name on the score sheet than, than anyone else. But I, for a single moment, I don't know. So what was it, sort of mid-70s you started following? Yeah, so uh, I think I got, a, um, I got an Everton shirt. End of, so Christmas 75 I think because a, a mum had steamed a number 6 on the back and it wasn't an Everton shirt it was a blue shirt white collar um, and she'd, put, she'd steamed the Everton badge she'd found one of the, the round badges that you could get yeah. and steam, steamed them on and, and um, so yeah so 75-6 was probably when it started yeah yeah. but yeah. what was it like in Cornwall and the playgrounds what, what were there Just, well, I had nothing to I had nothing to brag about so <laughs> you know we, all, we, were, time, close, we were close a couple of times um uh, first time I remember sport making me cry uh, was uh, Aston Villa beating us in the League Cup final. Uh, replay, replay. Yeah. Second replay. Um, they, uh, I remember being really upset about that. Um, I think Andy Gray was playing for Villa that day, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was. Was he, was he off the bench or was he in? I, I think he. He was definitely. I think he was definitely in their team. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, that's the fir- that's the first solid memory of Everton um, upsetting me. There's yeah. been a few since, but that was <laughs> that was the first one. So, um, but other than other than that, you know, obviously we were close in the FA Cup that same season. Um, but there wasn't. I, d- I, I remember in eighty one, eighty two, eighty one, eighty two. When did City? When did City play Tottenham in the? Uh, or was that eighty one? Anyway, the season where we got to the quarterfinals and lost to Man City. Mm-hmm. I'd. Um, I'd created a, a a magazine to sell at school. I was told I couldn't sell it because they I wasn't allowed to make any money. But I remember uh, putting several pages together on sport generally. But it was all because Everton were having a good cup run that it inspired yeah. me to do it. And and I remember um, there was a co- I created a competition in there, an Everton related competition. And you know if you won it, you got a pack of Hubba Bubba gum or something like. That. I remember that clearly. But um, <laughs> and then they and then they lost to City in a replay and I, I didn't do it again so obviously that was a, another illustration of them upsetting me to the point where I thought I'm not doing that again and uh, yeah it was um, it was a bit of a surprise when they suddenly became uh, as good as they were well that's it. it it kind of we sort of went from the 7-8th place top flight team mm. to champions well the best team in Europe mm. within what Very eight season right, yeah, no. really well, I mean, wasn't it the winter of 83 was uh, he, no matter what Sir Philip Carter said at the time, I, you've got to believe he was very close to, to going. And the players themselves yeah. talk about in the. Have you seen the film? I've not seen it yet. Right, the players it. themselves talk about three key games and uh, Birmingham, Stoke, Birmingham in the league, Stoke in the FA Cup, yeah. and I think, uh, Oxford, and then Oxford. And they talk about those three games making a massive difference. And I think the players believe that there would have been a change. Yeah. And they would they would know. They'd have that feeling. Yeah. I mean. Um, yeah, that it was it was unbelievably quick from that point. Yeah, you know, because they didn't lose many games the rest of that season, and then albeit they started the next season poorly with the first two league games, but but beyond that, it was that was well, fantastic. It, it's always the, everyone always goes back to the Kevin Brock back pass mm. against Oxford, but my dad's always said to me it was the Birmingham game for him yeah. that really kicked it off because I think that was the week after the nil nil against Coventry with the yeah. fifteen thousand. Yeah. So I think. I, we'd reached our lowest have you, point. Have you spoken to Andy Gray? Not yet, no. Andy Gray says that Howard came in to that, that day and said, if it doesn't happen today, we have to make big changes. Right. I'm talking wholesale changes, we've got to do something different if it doesn't. And they won the game. Um, and Andy talks about that. And then Peter picks up because his game is Stoke in the FA Cup. Right. Where Howard sort of opened the slats. Yes, yeah. And the noise that they were making outside and said, do it for them. Um, so yeah, I, I mean Neville doesn't think it was the Oxford game. He thinks it had happened before that. Yeah. Um, some of them, you know, it's split. They'll all, they're, they're probably all those two, three, four games that happened around them. They'll all relate to those games because we were awful. Because they came on the back of a really bad run. I think yeah. this, it, was, Wolves, it was a busy Christmas period. Wolves slapped by three, Wolves. Yeah. Got yeah. Uh, by Wolves, I need to yeah. ask Andy about that later. Yeah, I think Andy was captain felt. for that game. I think it made him <laughs> captain. And they, yeah, so, against yeah. his old club, he just signed yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. No, not good. Yeah, but I mean everything just took off after yeah. that, and then to sort of to become the best team in Europe I, I was listening to an interview you did um, I think with City Talk and it touched on high school which is always a touchy yeah. subject and it's a really difficult one to deal with because yeah. 
it affected that. I mean, it affected a lot of clubs. You know, yeah. you, you look at like Coventry, yeah. um, Luton won, won trophies, never got to play in Europe, but yeah. it, it had a profound effect on Everton. But I think that um, I think Norwich were another team that, that at some point would yeah they won the league yeah. Cup, and, yeah. uh, and and I absolutely accept that it did affect those teams, but they didn't have. The, the team that Everton had that had the ability to potentially go into yeah. to Europe the European Cup and, and win it and I, and I think that if you look at that period I think they won it six years out of seven English teams didn't they yes you just, know, and, just leading up and to Aston, that and yeah. the Aston Villa team that won it in 82 were not as good as the Everton team in, no, in 85 no, really, yeah. and they won it and um, you know, I, I think that I don't think the club's ever recovered not properly if you, if you think that they won the league title in 85 then won it again in 87 with a bit of a patchwork team Five years later, Sky comes in and, and the money comes pouring into football. And it, with with the exception of Leeds, every team that was up there at that point when yeah. Sky arrived has stayed up there. And um, I find it hard to believe that if that squad stays together, as I think it would have done. Yeah. I don't think Howard goes anywhere. If, no, if you're no if you're the manager of a team that that is is uh, dancing around the the, uh, the the sort of top of the European competitions, then I, I I can't see that you would leave. In those days, it didn't happen. Players didn't really leave. No, you know, not the way that they do now. You know, the the the, the players would have stayed. Howard would probably have stayed. You know, Andy Gray would have stayed if we were in Europe. So if you think of that four that he'd have had to rotate: Adrian Heath, Graham Sharp, Gary Lineker, and and Andy Gray. I yeah, mean, it's pretty formidable. Line, oh, isn't it? you know, and on the with Sheedy and Stephen scoring as many goals as they did, and uh, I just don't see how that team doesn't thrive. Yeah, if it stays together, and it and it would have stayed longer together, and and it would have still Everton would still have been um, a top team when Sky arrived, and therefore, uh, you know, you, you can't say that things would definitely have happened, but I think they would have stayed around the top of the league, uh, and therefore been a beneficiary of uh, yeah. of of some of the things that came into the game, the Champions League. I think they'd have appeared in it, um, and. Um, yeah, I don't think any side suffered quite as much. No. Side suffered, you know, yeah. but not as much as Everton did. We, by we don't do things by halves, do we? No. I mean, I you think seven years later we were staying up on the last day of the season. But well, if, if, you know, there's a guy in the film who could tell you this quite merrily, Dave Feely, and, um, and he said to me, you know, First World War breaks out when Everton oh, were champions. Yeah. Second World War breaks out when Everton were champions. There's only been two World Wars. And then the, the only other significant ban for English teams playing in, in, in Europe is, is after Heisel. Um, and Everton are uh, KO'd by all of them. Yeah. Well, so, you know, it's dreadfully, dreadfully unlucky team. Well, I have to put a positive spin on that. It's sort of like we were champions on the eve of both World Wars, so effectively we held the title longer than anyone. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. There, is, there is that. Yeah, no, it's a good, sp <laughs> it's a good spin, you know. And you, but you, you are tempted to say, well, let's say we'd have won two or three more league yeah, titles. And suddenly, it's outrageously bad luck. Oh, you know, so I think that... Um, yeah, I don't want to make the, the the film isn't the the a, story, a hard luck story. Oh no! Obviously, no. you get to Heisel and it, and it is an emphatic full stop on on that side. I know we won the league two years later, yeah. but it, it was the beginning of the end in many ways. And uh, as Andy Gray says, it was it should have been the beginning of the beginning. Yeah. Um, and um, but we, uh, you know, in the film. Heisel is followed by 86, which was, you know, so that, close. Funny enough, not. that was the first time I cried at a football match. Oh, that was my, the my the memory. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. yeah. No, that was a shocker. And, um, and then the film does mention 87, but really it, it, we then sort of throw forward to, to 2015 and Howard passing. And oh, okay. So there is, there is quite a lot of emotion and down uh, stuff, but I think we managed to bring it up, and I won't tell you how, but, but I think we managed to get it to be an uplifting ending yeah. um, and the story really is focused on that 84-5 yeah. team how it came from you know the the um, uh, the, the 83 winter to somehow be as good as it was 84-5 is, is extraordinary yeah well, as, you, as we said earlier that, that's not something that's ever really picked on picked up on so much the, the speed at which that team progressed and it, it was it's like you know the way a lot of people look at the Leicester team that nearly got relegated a few years ago and yeah. then won the Premier League. Yeah. It was that level. It's, yeah, it's not a million miles away from that, is it? And uh, you know, I mean, different. I think most of the players will tell you that the that week uh, we lost to Liverpool three 0 Howard offered to resign or, or told um, Colin Harvey was going to quit. Pulled Colin Harvey in. Peter Reid reappeared in the team, having been unfit for, for most of the time that he'd been there yeah. at the club and then Andy was signed and 
they will. Ta Adrian Heath says that, that Peter Reid and Andy Gray would do anything to win a football match. Right. And they brought a mentality that to that point. There were a lot of young kids, promising young kids, but they brought a different edge to that dressing room. One in terms of their personalities yeah. and, and and a sense. You know, they're, they are louder. Andy Gray, you probably hear him before you see him. Yeah. And he's like, he, he's always been like, as far as I understand. Uh, throughout his career that's the way he's been and he energizes people around him uh, and so to have that positive attitude come into the changing room even though he himself was not 100% sure at that time but to have that arriving in the changing room that brought the best I think out of Peter Reid yeah and then suddenly some of the younger kids felt like oh you know what it's okay to have a voice here and and we've got a couple of leaders and they're both they're, they're just a pair of winners they want I would imagine that they're a nightmare playing anything <laughs> and Adrian he said they would uh, whatever it took so whether that's legally or illegally you know on the pitch in the in the dressing room and in the tunnel beforehand you know Andy would basically say to the center half you, you better be up for this today and just say to him right up front you are, you need to be up for it because yeah. I'm ready well there's the, there's, know. there's the famous altercation of Bayern Munich isn't there this is not football Mr Kendall well yeah and I mean that that night probably uh, epitomized the team more than any other night yeah. because it wasn't about pure football that night they played the third goal is brilliant yeah. third goal is brilliant but there was a, a refusal to be beaten certainly they weren't going to be physically outdone that night and Bayern Munich were putting the foot in as well it yeah. wasn't just but the, the Everton that night were that was a strength of character physical strength as well and, and um, yeah was, yeah, that's fantastic that's good in the, uh, it's a good bit in the film I think that yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's that intangible thing that I don't think we've ever really managed to get back since yeah. where the whole the whole ground comes together with the team yeah. and it all works perfectly yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was at Fiorentina a few years ago when uh, that night when Arteta's goal went in yeah. and that was pretty crazy yeah. but um, I know people that were at both and they say you know Fiorentina was a good night but Bayern was just different well that's it I think anyone who was at Fiorentina yeah. will, will know how good the atmosphere was and then you've got to think well to have actually gone on and won the game yeah. in the way we did yeah. at Bayern Munich it would have yeah. been something else yeah and the edge is taken off Fiorentina by the fact that we lost the penalty shoot actually <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 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 so, oh no it was I mean it's very Everton that it, it's very one of the great nights no. in terms of the stadium in our history and we actually went out yeah. that night. We didn't lose, so, so there is no, that. We went, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, penalties yeah, all yeah. So what, what, was, what was your first game at Goodison? First game at Goodison? Well, this is, this is my first Everton game was the 86 Charity Shield. But down in Cornwall, the opportunity to get up here was, it just yeah. didn't exist. So uh, I think my first Everton game was Middlesbrough. I think it was a 2-2 against Middlesbrough and I don't know what year that was. But um, yeah, I mean, disappointing in terms of how long I had to wait to get up here. But uh, oh no, no, uh, it was uh, Everton Woking in the FA Cup. All oh, right. So nine, uh, ninety. Was that ninety? It was ninety, wasn't it? I when yeah, we were beaten one nil. Because I remember I was covering. <laughs> I worked for the Surrey Herald newspaper, and unbelievably, I was watching at home the CFAC, The draw was being made on C, and I was watching it on CFAX and, and Woking came out first, and Woking were in our area, so yeah. we covered Woking games, you know, and they'd just beaten West Brom. And so Woking came out first, and then they they were followed by Everton. I was like, "You have got to be kidding!" Because it's you know, so it's the team that we cover in the newspaper yeah. and my, my team, and uh, couldn't believe it. And then very quickly, um, it was uh, Woking decided to play the game at Goodison, right? Because um, they didn't feel that their ground uh, or anywhere in that, around it would be would be big enough. And um, yeah, that was my first game going up in the press box. Watch it from the press box. Everton won one 0 Sheedy. Sheedy got the goal, but I remember it more for the fact that we'd done a pull out in the in the in the paper, the Surrey Herald, four page pull out, previewing the game. But in those days, with it being a, a weekly regional newspaper, um, the pull outs had to be done for for uh, advertising reasons, etc. I think they had to be done ages before right. the rest of the newspaper. So like a ten days or something, the pull out was done, and so I had to ring the club. So I was nervous anyway. I was only about twenty. I was twenty one. And I rang the club to try and speak to Howard Kendall, and I and I got through eventually. Got through to Howard Kendall, and obviously he is a bit of a, a hero uh, to me at that stage. Yeah. And and I asked him about the game, and he just said, you know, we've got three games before that. I haven't even thought about it. And no matter what I said to him, you know, he's like, look, I, you know, I'd love to say tell you more, but we've got uh, two league games and uh, maybe a league cup game. Anyway, so it was a long way off for him. So he hadn't 
thought about it. So I didn't get anything quote wise, and I was I was way too embarrassed to say that to my sports editor that I hadn't got anything. So he came back from lunch. I remember I'd done the phone call at lunch, so there was nobody around because I was a bit nervous. And um, he came back from lunch and he goes, "How'd it go with Kendall?" I said, "I had that moment where I either say it wasn't very good, <laughs> or or it, yeah, it was fine." And I and I went for the latter. I said, "Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Good quotes." Yeah, yeah, really good. And so, just made up just a ton of quotes from <laughs> Howard Kendall for the pullout. So you know, I had this big thing uh, um, saying um, I, don't, I don't know what the headline w- we went with from the Everton because he did the Woking perspective and I did the Everton. Yeah, and uh, it was just sort of said Kendall. Um, we won't underestimate Woking or something like that and he'd never said that I, I just assumed he would have said that <laughs> and um, uh, and Tim Bazaglo there was a kid called Tim Bazaglo had scored a hat-trick for Woking against West Brom and there was a, I think there was a whole paragraph about how Everton would be paying close attention to, to Tim Brilliant. Bazaglo which obviously was it, was it was all made up the whole all of his quotes were made up but I like to think he would have said something yeah. close, to, close to what we went with but yeah I was too embarrassed to say he told me he hadn't thought about That's it. That's brilliant. Yeah. You, got, you got the measure wrong on the phone call, though. Yeah, yeah, so you thought, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is how we'd be thinking about yeah, that. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Did you deal yeah. with Howard much at all? Uh, no, only, um, only that game and then on the day itself. <laughs> on the day itself, uh, my sports editor came up the wrong... I don't know if it's the same thing, but the Goodison, where the manager used to do his press conference, or his immediate to the, to the, to the written stuff, um, was in a little room and, and he came up from I guess from the players uh, from the changing room came up some stairs and then shut the door behind him and uh, and stood um, with the door just behind him and then my sports editor had been in the Woking dressing room suddenly somehow manages to get up the stairs that I don't think he's supposed to and just opens the door and knocks Kendall over the table that's in front of him so I'm thinking oh we're doing really well here uh, and then I ask a question about I said is a can you enjoy a game like that or is there too much pressure to win and I think I said win the damn thing and he said he just stared at me and said what damn thing and I don't know what happened after that I just remember thinking <laughs> this is brilliant so I've made up a load of quotes you've now you've now stared me down and my sports <laughs> editor has rammed you over the top of the table so the Surrey Herald made its mark yeah definitely yeah, yeah. thankfully Woken didn't so much no, exactly but yeah, I mean, um, yeah. so you worked on a few sports films I've worked on a few before this uh, I made um there's not many uh, that have been to the cinema. The only the, the two that have been in the cinema were a rugby film about the previous World Cup, yeah. um, and then Sevi the movie, yeah. um, which came out a few years ago. And I was I sort of did I looked after the archive for that. Um, Sevi was as I said he was a big hero of mine. Yeah. So, um, um, but this is the first one as a as a director, um, and I, and I'm. I'm pleased that it's that's Everton because you, I feel on just in terms of knowing the subject, I feel yeah. like I was never going to struggle on knowing the subject, getting to the right people, uh, and making the film how I wanted it. You know that that sort of evolved. Yeah. But but um, but I'm, and if I never make another one, I'm pleased that I did this one. How good does it feel in getting the team back together today? I mean, that must be it's for something you've done and you've put your heart and soul into. That must be a brilliant feeling. I think, I think tonight will feel good. Yeah. Um, I, I, Adrian's not coming over which is a great shame um, I think he's paying the price for Minnesota doing so well this right. season in the MLS and, uh, and he's really busy with the club and unfortunately he can't get over which is a shame because he's brilliant yeah. Adrian he's lovely um, but hopefully everybody else will be there and um, yeah that'll, that'll be nice yeah, it'll be great you know just um, them going in on the blue carpet and I think they're I've seen the schedule for the evening and you know everybody's going to be in their seats and then they're going to get called in and I think that'll be great. Yeah, that'll be really good. Make sure you take the time to just take a step back yeah, and that, enjoy it. Be think nice. This is I think it's for. nice when you watch when we watched when it premiered at the Liverpool Film Festival. You know, I was sat there with my editor, and he's an Australian. You know, there's no real uh, connection to Everton, etc. And I sat there, and we know where we think we'll get the first sort of reaction slash laugh. Yeah. So we're waiting for that moment, and all of a sudden they laugh at something that we hadn't expected them to laugh at. So when they laugh at something you don't think is that strong a line. We just, I particularly just really relaxed because I just thought, well, if they like that, you know, if they like that, then they'll be. I mean, you can think that you've made a good film. I think it's a good film. I think mm. for an Everton fan, it's a really good film. Yeah. I think they'll like it. I think we celebrate that team. There's some, there's some nice, funny moments in that. It is emotional at the end, but, but I think as an Everton fan, it, it, you know, I can sort of say, I, I think you'll enjoy this. Whether it translates beyond that and the, the general football fan I hope so yeah. I think it's funny enough to do that that you can watch it and just enjoy the, the individuals because the, the stories aren't really about Everton they're about guys that got together and had a lot of fun on and off the pitch yeah. um, and the result of that was that Everton became a really successful team and 
Um, and I think it, it reflects very well on Howard and his man management in particular. Uh, and Colin, I think uh, Colin can't get there tonight, he's not very well, but um, I think it reflects well on, on them and, and Mick Eaton it doesn't really get a mention in the film, but I think it, it became clear to me how big a part he was right. um, of that management team. Um, but to get to get the last, to get the reaction, to get applause at the end is lovely. It's yeah. really, and I think I'll probably, I'll probably think more about it in a few months' time when I'm working on something that I haven't enjoyed as much. Right. You know, when I'm sat there, I, I work on the Europa League uh, and the and the U, UCL nights, etc. And, and I'm sure that in a few weeks' time, I'll be sat there doing that, watching, I don't know, a, couple, a, a Romanian team play somebody, else, and and I'll, I'll just be like. You know, I wish I was. I wish I was back in Perth with Gary, or, or doing yeah. something to do with this film. I, I, I'm sure that that'll be the moment where I think, you know, a bit when the players the players talk about uh, you go to the cup final and and making sure you soak it all in. I, I really need to make sure I. I'm a bit. I wouldn't say I'm stressed about it tonight, but I'm a bit sort of wired about getting yeah. making sure everything is okay tonight. And um, and you take everything sort of every little setback. You're like, oh no. Um, stock is there enough stock going <laughs> to the into the various stores? Yeah, Can people true. download it? Are they getting what they want from the download? Will it play technically? Yeah. Will there be any issues? And, and you worry too much about that to maybe enjoy it as much as you should. But hopefully, hopefully tonight it'll be good fun. Yeah, you've yeah. done your part definitely. I can't wait to see it. I'm looking oh, forward to tonight. Right. Thanks for your time, Rob. Appreciate right, that. No, Lovely stuff. Good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Nice.